Oh, nice to see. Oh, I, I love your hair color. Can yeah. I see that? <laughs> oh, that's off. interesting. It maybe it's time to color it I, before I chop it all off. Okay. For um, for a suggestion, by the way, you did have a a pretty pretty funny one. <laughs> oh, jeez, it's not working. For some reason, it's not working with my AirPods. Oh well. Um. Anyways, uh, uh what'd you say? All right, maybe nobody's saying anything. Um, I was gonna say this call's supposed to be like 30, 40 minutes, so we can probably get started. Uh, Liana, Regina, I don't know if you have uh, met before. Liana is my uh, local friend and a former client, and uh, Reg Regina was also debating uh, coaching or doing a fitness challenge or something like that. So uh, there's that. Uh, and um, I don't know how much of the, like, how much of the fitness stuff you guys follow on the web, but I recently have been just asked the craziest questions and I've been running into like absolutely craziest advice. Everybody's into keto, everybody's into detox, everybody's doing intermittent fasting, I don't know, for a, like 16, fasting for 16 hours or for three days and then doing something else crazy, doing an ab challenge, just, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me, so I got a list of stuff, uh, and if you have something crazy that somebody has kind of suggested to you before, uh, write it down or throw it out at the end um, of the chat, I would, I would really love to hear, like, the demystifying all of these things, Hamley, um, okay, so uh, number one, that we're gonna go with is cardio burns fat and lifting burns muscle. So many women, I know, so I see you guys making faces. So many women think that, and most women that I get usually used to do, so that, have not, that have not been very experienced in exercising, right? I get some experienced uh, athletes uh, and some not so much. So the ones who have not been very experienced athletes usually come to me and they're like, oh wait, but like, we do the group classes to keep our heart rate in the fat burning zone or like I get on the cardio machine and I keep my heart rate in the fat burning zone it means when I'm doing cardio, all I'm doing is I'm burning fat, right? Well, wrong. Uh, when I lean out for a show, I don't really do cardio until the point that I really have to, which usually is, I don't know, a, a couple of weeks before the actual show. And right now I barely do any cardio at all you know, and we're talking like intense cardio. We're not talking walking. I don't, I'm not going to count walking leisurely as cardio. That's just your daily activities. That's what you should be doing anyways. It's not really exercise. Yeah, you do burn, burn some calories if you walk all day or if you hike all day, but you know, let's not get there. Um, so yeah, you burn fat when you're in caloric deficit, right? That's pretty, pretty obvious. Or you gain well, let's say you burn fat and muscle at the same time, always, regardless of what you're doing. You're going to burn some percent of fat and some percent of muscle. And that ratio is going to be different depending on your macros, on your program, and on how well everything else is planned, right? Pretty obvious. You can do cardio and burn fat only without lifting. That's fine. You're probably also going to burn more muscle rather than if you were lifting and doing no or a little bit of cardio. Does that make sense? Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, then the next thing is the fat burning zone. Um, I got the question from one of, one of the clients. Uh, she was going to swim uh, for cardio. And I actually thought about doing this myself, but the thing with uh, low intensity steady state cardio, such as like jogging, um, when you're really lean, so this lady is pretty lean. Like she is uh, probably about five seven and weighs uh, like a hundred. Um, she weighs uh, sixty kilos. What is that in pounds? One hundred thirty-five, one hundred thirty. So, anyways, something like that. Not not, not a very big human. She's pretty lean. Uh, so she does uh, a lot of Pilates, uh, like yoga, kind of uh, exercising on her own. 
uh, and we, we just added some cardio to get her uh, deficit to dip a little without taking out any calories. And she wanted to swim. Well, that's fine. However, with low intensity steady state cardio, it works best to uh, maximize your recovery. You want to do low intensity and say, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and maintain your pace. You're gonna maintain your pace and maintain your heart rate. When you swim, it is really hard to swim intensely for 15 minutes, right, without breaks. At least for me, I don't know. I feel like I, I could do like a swimming sprint and get my heart rate up enough. So it does feel like it is kind of moderate intensity, steady state, but then I have to stop. If I run though for 15, 20 minutes, or if I, brisk walk or do an elliptical or stairmaster or row it's much easier right which is why i'm not sure swimming is the right thing that's kind of more towards the uh higher intensity uh cardio right you do a sprint and then you walk back or you do a swimming sprint and then you swim back uh, so hope that covers the fat burning zone it's kind of it's kind of a myth almost um so if you do if you do want to burn more fat probably and you think you should decrease the intensity of your cardio you're probably wrong your cardio is probably needs to be a, a little bit of a notch higher uh you need to feel a lot out of breath you need to feel burning the muscle uh if you if it is so high to the point that you feel like it's unsustainable it's more high intensity it has different benefits than steady state and is applied i would say a lot less it's more taxing on the nervous system but Still, it needs to be pretty intense, whatever the cardio you're doing. Make sense? Thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Next one is detox. Who has ever detoxed? Ra ra raise a hand. I have when I was young and dumb. <laughs> and yeah, that hasn't. <laughs> Emily, have you? No, Regina, we don't see your face, but you can, you can type anything in the chat if you want. Uh, I'll read it. Uh, so... When I was young, I grew up in Russia, and there's a lot of advice that is like, oh, just drink kefir or eat watermelon for a couple of days, and um, maybe eat buckwheat for a couple of days or oatmeal or whatever. And a lot of women follow this mono diet advice at the same time as here. Now it's like a popular fad that your body has so many freaking toxins, you just need to, you need to get rid of them. And for this, you need to buy. Uh, this expensive jar and that expensive jar to eat after detox and these vitamins and those and and I mean it usually revolves around selling you some bullshit products honestly if you think your body has toxins and it's it's not going to survive without without those then ask ask these people to provide some research that it's it's actually the case I have not seen any research in, in my life as a coach and as a human post uh, puberty post post trying those things when I was uh, when I was a teenager right I have not seen anything that proves that we, we need to detox as humans you ha you don't see dogs detoxing or cats you don't see animals doing this shit and we I mean we're animals after all so I, I really I really don't get it <laughs> if anybody can can prove this to me scientifically that would be that'd be wonderful so if, if somebody's trying to sell you something like that even even if they're selling you on like, I don't know, a keto diet for then you to fast for a couple of days, do a detox and then jump on that. What is the logical reason behind it? I'm really not sure. Maybe they're trying to prove you that like, yeah, you eat more fats and protein on a keto diet. Plus you have starved yourself before. So you're supposed to have this mental clarity or whatever they call it. And uh, because you're eating less carbs, your body retains less water. So it does appear that you're a leader. In fact, when your body is in starvation mode and first you do feel hungry yeah it holds onto an unnecessary weight but then you kind of either keep going or you crash or binge that that doesn't make sense to me either speaking of which we got two uh different diets right to lose weight i would say even vegan or plant-based even though i'm i'm plant-based some people do it and then they're like oh man like a lot of people lose, lose fat, lose weight on, on a plant-based diet. Well, first, I really don't like when they say it's a vegan diet because vegan is an ethical thing. Let's say plant-based diet. If you decide to eat 
to not eat animal products. Uh, you can eat crappy on it, right? Coca-Cola, fries, and vodka are all plant-based. <laughs> what happens if you eat those things? Sure, even take a vitamin. Good for you. I mean, <laughs> and have some soy milk. But there's a way to screw up almost any diet. Uh, we're getting back to the foundation of either you are in caloric deficit if you're losing weight, or if you are in maintenance, or if you are in caloric profit, right? And you're bulking up, you're getting muscle, right? <laughs> it's either one of those, no matter the diet you do, you can harder or easier do it on any diet. Same thing with keto, even though I just mentioned that because you have less carbs, your body tends to retain less water uh, to manipulate them. So I hope that also makes sense. <laughs> All right, let's see what's next on the list. Um, boy, okay, I do get boys and girls doing this is uh, a ton of abs, thinking that that will give them a six pack or reduce their waistline. And then at the same time, I would see the same girls and boys at the gym, never doing compound lifts, never doing deadlifts, squats, bench press, like those heavy, freaky looking powerlifting moves, like everybody's afraid of the barbell sitting on the machine. Who has seen people like that? <laughs> Pretty much, I think they exist at any gym, especially if you go to like Planet Fitness or some, you know, some big box gym with a ton of machines and not enough free weight. I see those a lot, even at my gym, even though it's a powerlifting and bodybuilders gym. And to me, it's pretty sad because let's, let's think logically. Biceps is a muscle, right? What do you do to make it bigger? Type in the chat or unmute yourself. What do you do to grow your biceps? Why, I have to admit that I can barely hear you. I think I have some issues with connection. Oh, I don't no. know, I just, yeah, you're just getting cut. Um, can Emily no, I think, hear I think me well? It's, I think maybe it's on my side. If no one else is experiencing the same well, issue, Regina, that's probably... I'm recording it in case there's a, an issue. You can rewatch it on YouTube later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, if I, if I'm not replying, just know that okay. it's because I haven't heard you. <laughs> gotcha. Emily, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just saying I can hear fine. So. Okay. Well. Do you want to tell us what most people do to grow their biceps? Um, I mean, you just work it out, right? Right. You, you, you do curls. Sounds logical. <laughs> Sounds logical, right? And then yeah. here's a follow-up question. What do you do when you do the same amount of stuff for abs? They grow and you get a big belly. <laughs> they do grow. So what happens is if I have fat over my biceps, yeah, I'm gonna have a big arm, but until I lean it out, I'm not gonna have like a lot of definition. And the same thing around the abs, which is why I personally think it's kind of stupid to work out abs unless you're really, really lean and you like, your life is revolving around having a six pack. Most people just want to get into a better overall shape and uh, don't really care about a six pack. They just want to be kind of overall lean. If a six pack is a deal breaker for you, maybe lean out first and then see if you need to do abs at all. Because if you have been doing compound lifts for your entire life or for your, you know, latest phase of lifting, then it is very probable you already have a six pack. You just don't see it because it's covered with a thin layer of fat. Like I right now don't have a six pack, but if I do press on my stomach, I can feel that it's there. I, so I don't do pretty much any abs at all. And when, I'm, when I get to probably about 15, 14, 15% body fat, it starts to show. So I, I personally really don't care about doing abs that much. And uh, if some of my clients want to, and it's a deal breaker, I do include in their training, but just want to make sure that we remember that compound lifts usually, if they're done correctly, and if you know how to engage everything and kind of get everything nice and stiff and stay and focused, uh, those develop abs and core way better 
than just isolated ab work. And they're more taxing for your central nervous system. Uh, and you get more tired and you work out a bunch of other muscles and abs are kind of getting the same amount of work as you would be doing stupid crunches uh, together with, with the rest of your training. So I hope that makes sense. Thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Um, I want to tackle Liana's. Liana sent me a, a good one that she's heard from her uh, longtime coach before. Do, do you want to tell us, actually? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear your question. Yeah, so you, you messaged me on Instagram the tip oh, that was former fun. coach gave you. Well, she wasn't my coach because after that advice, I was like, yeah, you're not going to be my coach. So she told me that I shouldn't eat two hours before I work out and two hours after I work out. And my workouts were like two hours long. And I was like, I, I can't not eat for six hours. I'm just going to die. I was very skinny at that time. Like, and like for me, not eating six hours was like crazy. So I was like, whatever. Yeah, thank you. I just thought it was showing her not being professional. I mean, there, uh, maybe I was wrong. The, there, there is probably uh, some sense of logic in her advice. Like, if, if you did some super ex str strenuous training, then maybe she was just worried that the food wouldn't be digested and it would just bother you. But, like, if it didn't, then obviously, you know, that, that kind of advice is to be judged on an individual basis. So, like, for me, if I eat within, probably less than an hour, an hour and a half before my workout, I'm going to feel like shit, to be honest. But I need to eat after. <laughs> that, advice, that doesn't make sense to me. I, I think eating after the workout, even if you are leaning out, there's, there's no reasons not to. So I usually try to have at least 25 grams of protein and at least 30 grams of carbs right after my workout. So, you know, there. You, you, you can think uh, of like getting it into the little carb window that's 45 minutes post-workout. Yeah, there's debates on this existing or not. Um, it, you're, like, you're not going to die if you, if you don't get your, your protein and carb fix right after the workout, but there, there's no reason not to if you want to, right? Yeah. <laughs> Emily, um, have you had any weird... Um, workout and exercise myths in your life that you want to share? Have you heard any? I don't think anything in particular. I've heard like different things about like the fad diets like keto or um, intermittent fasting was one. Um, but other than that, like I haven't really, I don't, I think nothing that I really took to heart like it was just the obvious things you talked about like the detoxing stuff or right kind of all of this like oh, that it's obvious to you it's not obvious to a bunch of people <laughs> who have education sure. and jobs and <laughs> you know go vote <laughs> I usually just kind of take it as like the classic diet and exercise is probably the best way to go <laughs> yep I agree yep uh, people always look for the new and the most interesting, but the, the, the most boring and traditional advice usually ends up being the one that works, sadly. And if most people believed it, I wouldn't have my, have my job. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah, so actually we didn't cover intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting could be useful, uh, but not for a lot of the benefits that people claim it has, like people claim mental clarity, and uh, what else? Uh, Anti-inflammation and yeah. like some severe fat loss. Like those would come primarily from a good macro split and either enough food if you're bulking or a slight deficit if you're cutting. But how, in what window you eat that during the day doesn't really matter. However, I will, I will highlight that the benefits of intermittent fasting are that if you have an eating disorder history, uh, having a shorter window to eat food, like if you are recovering from binge eating, for example, does allow you to kind of restrict your binges. So for example, like you can only eat, I don't know, breakfast, like you have to be done in an hour. You can't just be there like sitting and spooning it, watching TV for, I don't know, 
three hours while doing, um, you know, doing work or watching TV or whatever, and then you like suddenly are done with a, a tub of ice cream, right? Like you, you can, you kind of like, it allows people to structure eating more. So that's a benefit. And another benefit is that you think about food less while you can do other stuff. So for example, if you have two meals a day, if you're doing intermittent fasting and you're doing say uh, big lunch and big dinner and you skip breakfast or you do big breakfast and big, big uh, dinner between lunch and dinner, um, it does allow you to kind of be like, okay, well, you know, this is not eating time. I'm not wasting time making food. I'm not wasting time thinking about food. You just kind of teach your body that at that time, you don't have a meal. You can do other stuff. Uh, so that's a benefit, but it doesn't work well for a lot of people. Uh, but, and also I want to, I want to say that the opposite of intermittent fasting, like eating too often is what a lot of people think uh, is like really good for our metabolism. It speeds it up. And then we like burn all the fat in the world and become bodybuilders because all the bodybuilders will just run around with their Tupperware that, and, and they eat every two hours, right? <laughs> I have done that. And I can tell you that it makes pretty much no difference in what periods of time you eat your food in the, for an average human, uh, unless you're, you have some disorders, unless you have, um, I forgot what it's called, when, you, when they remove a part of your stomach uh, because um, like you, you're trying to control hunger and nothing else works. What, what is it called? Does it, somebody remember? Uh, gastric bypass? Gastric bypass? Right, gastric uh. bypass, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do know some people who, who had it done, and yeah, obviously those people can't eat like huge portions. I live with one. <laughs> what? I said I live with one. <laughs> right. How, how, does, how, how are his eating habits? Sorry? How are his eating habits? Like, is, is there anything particular about him? Just regular. No, just regular. Okay. That's cool. Because I've been told by one of my potential clients that um, they just couldn't eat in, like, breakfast, lunch, dinner types of things. They had to eat, like, literally throughout the day. It was, like, a nonstop kind of uh, snacking uh, type of type of eating, which was really interesting. <laughs> well, uh, maybe different type of surgeries. His surgery was like, he can eat like normal person now, not like before. <laughs> so. Good, good, yeah, gotcha. Well, yeah, but anyways, in the, the number of servings into which you split your, your food, I think matters very, very little above the overall um, calories. Let's see what else I have here. This is a famous Russian one. Uh, if you don't eat after 6 p.m., magic is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> what, Liana, you raise your hand. Did you do that? I did that. <laughs> okay. Why? Well, it works. It works because you're limiting the amount of food you're eating. Just, just you know, math. So it works. It's a form of intermittent wow. fasting, right? You're just like limited yeah. time and then you know you're done you can like go have ice cream in the middle of the night because you're done yeah awesome but once again if like some people they start eating at like noon or two especially in the u.s like you wake up you grab coffee you're running late for work and then by lunch you're like dying hungry uh so if you stop eating at 6 p.m a lot of people they just like don't have enough time to have the calories but if you are wise and you wake up early like you do and then you eat breakfast and then you kind of do this in a smart way then that that's a, a really great way and it lets you sleep better probably too right mm -hmm. yeah well not having food within like two three hours before bed is a great idea uh but on the uh, on the contrary i want to say that uh especially if you're cutting there are benefits to having just a little bit of protein right before going to bed uh so that you don't you don't burn muscle if you're in deficit so I do do that during prep when I'm like really hungry. I would save like a scoop of protein to have before bed and I'll make like my favorite protein chocolate mousse and then I feel like it's a treat and I go to bed happy. But definitely unnecessary <laughs> for uh, normal uh, kind of eating patterns. Um, all right, so Regina has, says she has connection issues. So uh, she she will... Uh, just watch the uh, the recording later. Uh, do you guys do you guys have any questions? 
Um, anything I didn't cover? Do people still do that plastic wrap thing that you mentioned? Oh, yeah, yeah, I wrote about it. I didn't write it in, in the list. <laughs> yeah, spot reduction. Okay, yeah. So many people are like, oh man, like, I'm fine with my figure, but I just want to lose my belly. I just want to lose my love handles. You can spot reduce. You can wrap all the saran wrap around you want. You can put, I don't know, pepper and cayenne and uh, this bur like burning uh, menthol thing. What is it? Like, you know, the gels that you put like over your area to burn. Uh, fat. <sighs> yeah. And then put <laughs> saran wrap over it. I mean, I used to do, I, I still have my neoprene belt. Right. And then my wife, my first coach made me do that. She's like, yeah, put on the neoprene belt during cardio. And I was like, but it like science proves that it doesn't burn the fat. So what the hell is it doing? She's like, well, yeah, it increases uh, your body thermogenesis. So you, you do get hotter and you burn more overall calories. So essentially you just sweat a little more. I think that is wrong. And I think you just sweat a little more and you get a little more water out so you are a little more dehydrated maybe you consume more water and then you pee out and sweat out more water so the overall <laughs> is a kind of net zero amount of water uh, balance around your body or maybe you're still slightly depleted electrolyte wise so you will have you'll be craving salt but like supposedly right after the workout you look a little more shredded and i, I look in there and i'm like yeah that that that, that must work <laughs> I don't think it does really work. People still do that? I, I, I haven't seen people doing that. Maybe I saw it like 20 years ago when I just started. But, but it was funny. It is really funny. You said there's like girls in the class. Classic raps. <laughs> Prepping for workout. Man, that's so sad. Yeah, I don't know. That's really sad. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, we are about half an hour in. Uh, and uh, if you guys uh, don't have any questions, do you have any advice for the topics for uh, two weeks from now? Not really. All right, Emily. All right. Well, uh, yeah, what's up? Oh, I was going to say, not off the top of my head, but uh -huh. I might think of something. Yeah, do you think of something, maybe just notice something that bothers you or your friends or they ask you, like, hey, how's coaching going? Um, yeah, I am totally uh, up for suggestions at this point because most of the topics evolve from the, from the questions that people ask me too, too many times. So I'm like, all right, it's enough. We're recording <laughs> a video and not talking about this ever again. No more plastic wrap. No more crunching <laughs> burn fat. No more crunches. Can we not detox anymore? Can we just no? Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining, uh, and I will see y'all uh, in two weeks. All Have right. a good day. Bye. Bye.